Hi, welcome back to Proceeding Onward in America. POA, for this vlog, we are going to discuss the top questions that you have about work camping. And at the end, we'll have some pros and cons. We're going to answer all of those right now so everybody would understand. What is work camping? Where can I work camp? And what's the good and the bad about work camping? So since we had a ton of questions, we picked out the top five. Now, just to get out there, just for the people who don't know, what is work camping is actually when you're traveling around in your RV. And mostly it's always full-time RVers that are doing this. You're able to apply to a job like on um, a campground and it's kind of like a trade. You work there, you get free sight. Some people pay you that plus money. Some people just pay you the free sight. And then you, once you're finished, you keep on traveling. So it's basically a good, a bad, and they're ugly behind it, but a lot of people like it. And we got the top five questions that everybody want to know about it. So we wrote them down and this one is from Matt. What's the most challenging thing about planning where you want to go? Oh, wow. The most challenging thing for us when it comes to work camping, I would probably have to say is knowing where we want to go next and what are they offering us at that location? Yeah, so we kind of had an idea that we want to do the East Coast and then head over to the West Coast. And our lives have been changing up and down and all around and we still haven't made it to the west coast but as we look forward to those locations there are several things to do for work camping in certain spots and say if we want to go to california there's more than one campground in california yes there is so the challenge behind that is figuring out what's the best work camping spot in a location where we can explore but also receive benefits from being in that spot which means what do they have to offer is it just for working there no pay is it for working there with pay what are they giving us as well as we're giving them it's all a handshaking moment and some are good some are bad and everybody got their own reasons to do things there are a lot of campgrounds out there that do exchange work for free stay and no money behind it but you get to work probably nine hours out the week, 20 hours out the week, and it pays for your whole campground for you to park your RV, including water, um, sewage, and electricity. And sometimes Wi-Fi. And sometimes Wi-Fi. And some include laundry, where they give you allowance. And then you got some that still include all of that, but still give you a base pay, which could be, which could be like the minimum wage of that state at the time. So you can be getting a certain amount of money per hour and you get free site or they take the money out of the site from the money that you're making. So that pretty much covers up some of the challenges. This is from another uh, person, Cheyenne. Are children in your future? And if so, how will that play into this lifestyle? <laughs> so that's a discussion that we've had. Well, Children are in our future. We definitely want to be parents. And when we do have kids in the future, um, right now it is on topic that they are going to be part of our lifestyle, traveling back and forth with them and even work camping with them. Now, when you have kids and you're work camping, is it, it is a little bit more difficult. Mm-hmm. Because uh, most of the times they ask for couples for work camping, not just single travelers. So what you'd have to do is somehow probably work out a schedule. If you both can get the work camping spot and maybe one person works during the day and the other person works during the night. We have offsetting schedules for or different days. one person can do all the working and the other one just stay home with the kids. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of families out there that have kids. Some has one. Some have up to six or eight. Mm -hmm. um, they do. They, they, they got all the power for me to have eight and six kids and one camper. Oh. But people like to live differently. 
Yeah, and they all make it work. And as the children get older and stuff like that, it does make it easier. Um, even if we had to, if we were working at a certain spot, uh, if we have a neighbor that lives by and they have a child that's old enough to babysit, um, they can always babysit the children as well. So it is always possible to travel. Um, just got to talk to your spouse and go from there. Next question. All right, this one is from Devin, and they're at the Sugar Beet Harvest, which we'll talk about later on. Uh, what sites do you use, and what's your favorite jobs? So what sites do we use for work camping? We definitely got KOA membership. It's $30, $35 a year. They give you access to their website, so you can search jobs all over the United States for any KOA job franchise or corporate. Mm -hmm. um, there is Amazon Workforce mm -hmm. um, that you can apply for. It's a seasonal position, but it's definitely another option. Some Facebook pages that you can follow, like the Work Camping Jobs or Work Camping News Force. Work Camper News, that's the name of it. You got some camp hosts that do post um, what they're looking for or if they need any work campers. And people can see these ads and reply to them and apply for the job as well. Mm -hmm. You also have jobs like where we're at right now, which is actually the Sugar Beet Tellers. Again, it's a, another seasonal job. Um, it's easy to apply. Um, and this one can be done either one person or two or mm -hmm. split shift if mm -hmm. you have kids involved. One of our neighbors is actually, his wife will work during the day and then he'll work at night. So they always have somebody watching, watching their little the, girl. Watching the little girl. And there is another one that we was told about, which is um, selling Christmas trees where mm -hmm. you can park your camper there. They put a fence around your camper and a good portion of it. They bring you Christmas trees. You sell the Christmas trees and you get paid for that. Yep. So oh. a lot of people actually go from the sugar beet harvest and then head down to the Christmas tree. So they're up north and they head down south and so forth. Start selling out those Christmas trees. Mm -hmm. It's Christmas season. Yeah. And we also heard about another one called J.C. Penny. We don't really know too much information on that, cause, but we're still looking. Um, but if you know, comment down below. Let mm -hmm. us know how that works. But we heard that J.C. Penny's is trying to be like Amazon and hire um, for a good season portion on their high peak season whatnot. And also, I did sign up for something called Work Camper News, and there's a free and there's also a paid portion to it. We're doing the free part, so I get emails from the Work Camper News, and we'll post uh, some, what jobs are looking Available. for help. Now, the problem is, because I'm doing the free portion, um, you get the email, the newsletter as I call it, a couple weeks after it actually is published on that site. So you get it after the paid portion, the paid portion. Correct. So if you pay, you get it right away. So the downside of it, the ones that I'm receiving, um, unfortunately, the spot may be taken up or it may not be. Yes. But it's another for uh, another way of finding out about work camping jobs. And there's always the Google search or YouTube YouTube search. You'll definitely find that when you YouTube search that you're definitely going to come across a lot of other videos of people of what they're doing. And the good thing is it's pretty much all over. There's even people in Canada and people in Mexico doing it. And there's definitely hundreds of places you can go to in the United States of America. Yes. And they're not all campgrounds. And then, oh, our favorite jobs. Um, I wouldn't say we have a favorite favorite yet, but mm -hmm. so far... I did like um, Dallas Campground. It was definitely huge, a lot to do. Um, it was definitely changing at the time we was there, and I kind of had fun. Yeah. I'm definitely open to explore again. I always say as long as I get paid, I'm okay with whatever job I'm doing. And I feel it's different for everybody. Like, there are some people that don't like doing the desk job, and there's some people that would rather be out here doing the sugar beet. It's different for everybody. Um, as we explore further on to different jobs, maybe we'll change our mind. But yeah, yes. that's the most positive one. Um, and then we have one from the Tin Can Travelers. This now relates to what's the one job you wouldn't do again? Out of the jobs that the work camping jobs that we did so far, so far, I think the one that I like the least was the one the camp the franchise koa 
where you don't get paid you just work for your site mm -hmm. now it was a great experience it was a great location and I needed it at the time for when I needed it and some people are okay with this as well and don't want to get paid because they're probably collecting retirement retirement or asset or whatever um but that I would probably say I did not I like the least would I do it again maybe depending on what I need out of it so it all depends on my needs as well as their needs mm -hmm. and I think we've also discussed housekeeping um we do work at the koas and we do enjoy working the front desk and doing maintenance and all that housekeeping isn't really high on our list uh yeah that's pretty much probably the least so i would do it again if there was the only job that was available and we needed money and stuff would, like that we I would, would do it again we would definitely do it again if it comes up and it's in our favoritism but it's not something we're searching for searching for no. No. <laughs> okay so that, that answers the questions um, and everything that we covered here. And now we're going to talk about some of the pros and cons. Yes. We have about three of each. There's a lot of pros and a lot of cons, but we took out the top three pros and the top three cons that, that we could, think. Yeah, that we could think of at this time. It's always changing as we learn and travel. Bro. Yeah. Pro. What's a pro to work camping? Um, traveling to different locations and seeing different cities, different, you know, you, it's the whole traveling part. It's basically part of why everybody's traveling around in their RV, their motorhome, their teardrop, their, you know, it's just traveling. That's the main pro of it all, I gotta say. Yeah, and you get to choose your destination. Yes. So that's, that's part of that pro. I guess the con to that would be if you do a work camping job, sometimes it's four to six months long or it's during the whole entire season. And you got some that are 12 months long. So it's all up to you. If you want to stay at that location for four months, six months, 12 months, it's great. It's up to you. If you're okay with staying at that destination, go for it. But that's a con in some people's heads mm -hmm. because some people want to come they want to stay for a while and they want to go maybe a week maybe a month but four months sometimes can be a little bit too long depending on the location but you can always leave if something happens just know that you burn some bridges along the way yes another pro you is... get different jobs yeah all yeah. these jobs offer is something different some one minute you're in New York working a housekeeping job. Next minute you're in Florida working a maintenance job. Next minute you're in California working a desk job. Next minute you're in Michigan farming. <laughs> <laughs> then you go down and do trees. <laughs> you got all these different jobs to choose from. And that's kind of like what's good. So it builds up your character. It builds up your personality. It builds up your resume. It makes you feel, it makes you want to learn more and new things on how things around this whole world works. So Hey, I wish there was more camping jobs out there like factories at Apple factory, but I know that's not possible. Or <laughs> we'll be walking out of the factory with Apple stuff. <laughs> or maybe even liquor stores, you know, park a thing up in there and we got a working in a distillery. I, I get to help make some Jack and Coke. Yeah, the Jack Daniels, where they get one free bottle every work period. Or every something. month. Every month. They get a free bottle. You'll learn about that in our future video. <laughs> I, I would love to work there. Have it in the backyard and I'm, I got access to all this liquor. Oh my gosh, you'd be good swimming. Anyway, some of the cons to that, a lot of them want couples and not just single people traveling. Yes. Most of these jobs, um, especially the campgrounds, campgrounds they're looking for two people. Now, there are some out there that are willing to take one mm -hmm. and it depends on your situation you could be parents and you got kids so you only need one person working you could be traveling alone and you don't have a wife or husband or significant other and you just need it for yourself you can tell them that some of them would understand and some of them won't they just want two people for one camper well the mostly the reason why they do that at campgrounds is because if they have to hire multiple people to fill up the shifts that's less camping spots 
that they have available to rent out to people traveling. So if you get to Florida, say during the winter, they want less work campers in taking their up spots. taking out spots. So if you get two people that take up one spot instead of two people singly traveling, taking up two different spots, that gets into their profits. So we understand the business aspect of it. Unfortunately, for those that are traveling, um, one of our people, well, there's some that are not traveling alone. There's one group that we're following and her husband and all that has stroke. Okay. And he's on, well, he had a stroke, sorry. And um, he unfortunately can't work. So she's trying to find jobs. So she's trying to do it all herself. Herself. To Um, take care of her husband and get to these next destinations. Strong woman, woman power. <laughs> so there's situations I'm sure some campgrounds would work for it. And it, during the middle of the season, you do have people that quit or leave or some family emergency happen. So maybe they just need that one spot filled. So always keep work, uh, always keep checking out the work camping sites and you never know what may pop up. Yes. And it's always good to negotiate with the owners. You can always just call them up and say, hey, it's just me explain your situation try to put a tear or two in it and maybe they'll feel sorry for you and give you the job still yeah you you just never know you never never know know. all right another pro is meeting new people Mm -hmm. you get to meet new people different people friendly people sometimes you get different neighbors you you get different friends you get to meet different people and the more you travel and the more you meet people, you get different stories. And all that wants you to do is just keep on traveling to go and explore what they explore and get a different aspect out of it. And sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad, bad but I, I just like meeting new people. I don't mind meeting other people. No. And it'd be also healthy for when we have children and all that. They get to meet different um, kids. kids and so forth. Now, it won't always be like a permanent friendship as we all travel together and so forth because everyone goes their own directions but that's what social media is about social media yeah you um, can always trade numbers and trade facebook accounts but depending on their age but anyways they get to have a different type of lifestyle which can be a pro or con depending um, but if the, i believe if they grow up into it it's a little bit easier than if you take them out of school system away from their home at a teenager state and then make them travel so it, it depends uh our last con for work camping is the money is not guaranteed no as we said before some don't pay you you're just allowed the site and some do pay but then they're not paying you on time or they're not paying you what they promised you or some would say that we got all these hours and then when you get there they don't have all these hours so there's a little gray area in between that so it's best to do your research and you know understand what you're getting yourself involved in make sure you have some contracts right now um it's probably good to write a contract but um i guess that's about it well also there's sometimes like how we're at the sugar beet harvest right now um they guaranteed us at least fifteen hundred dollars if we stay until the harvest is completed and you make all this money you're gonna be working all this time blah 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 weather dependent here we are we're week three and we've honestly we're on the night shift and we only had one full night of work that's it in the three weeks the weather's supposed to get better and they keep promising that um so we're hoping that the wet that we can make up some money but the thing is, with it being to the end of when I, the farmers say they're done harvesting, you could be here for the whole month of October. If the farmers say that they're done harvesting November 23rd, and we're not going to be here for that for other reasons, we don't get that $1,500. So we just spent the whole entire month here for one night and a couple hours here and there. So you win some, you mm-hmm. lose some. Not but, everything's perfect. No. And then there's also some campgrounds that have to close early due to some seasonal weather and stuff like that. Or so, floods. Or flooding. And so just know that weather can be very... Um, judgmental. Mean. <laughs> mean. Judgmental. Not really judgmental. <laughs> but it can change a lot of plans. And it doesn't matter if you're working at a campground or if you're doing harvesting. 
and doing some farming work. If you're selling trees, if it's bad weather, no one's going to show up and buy trees from you. So it is really, really weather dependent and hours are not always guaranteed. So I well, think that is... That's about it. That's about it. But we do also do want to do a little promotion. We do? Ah, we're promoting. Uh, so we have some stickers and all that from like the Rosary Rome, Death by Design, which is Kimberly C. Paul. She is a book writer. Uh, so that one, check out our previous video about that. And we also have Eat, Travel, Happy, and ours. <laughs> <laughs> well, we met a few other YouTubers and mm -hmm. vloggers, we even, and there's a few of them we met here. So it's pretty interesting and goes back to our pro, like we said, you meet different people. Yeah. So. And we have stickers and we have magnets. Everything is listed down below. And if you want to leave a tip, feel free. If you want to be promoted, let us know and we will put your stickers up or magnets, whatever you have, and we'll have those shown in our video promoting your page. Okay. Yeah, I think that'd be great. We'd love to promote other people. Other people help us, and we love to help you. So make sure you keep following us on. Facebook. Instagram. Twitter. And don't forget to become our Patreon. Where we can make more videos like this. And if you haven't already, like this video, subscribe, and give us a thumbs up. That's a like. <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up. Like it. <laughs> Whatever he said. And then uh, also ring that bell so you get notifications of when our videos are up so you don't miss anything because we have a lot of great stuff coming. Yes, we do. So until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.